Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin is not the only public figure facing backlash on matters related to the radical LGBTQ XYZ lobby. The World Professional Association for Transgender Health, more commonly known as WPATH, is feeling some heat too. Controversy has plagued its eighth edition of Standards of Care for the gender confused, which removed age restrictions on sex change treatments for patients. Now, online sleuths have uncovered that the newest edition has been quietly removed from their website. Now, is this a sign of reform based upon the leaked documents that expose their ideological bent that ignores science, or are they just waiting for the storm to pass? Here to uh, share more details, Meg Kilgannon, Senior Fellow for Education Studies at Family Research Council. Meg, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Tony. All right, so what's the deal? So before I was going to come on, I checked the WPATH website just to be sure, and uh, it is different than it was before these files were released, but the standard of uh, care version 8 documents are right back up on the front page. So, so they take them down to edit them? They took put, them, put them down and put them back up. I haven't looked through them, so I don't know if they were edited. But um, they're claiming that there's uh, internal web problems happening right now. But it's curious that something like that would happen following the release of the of the. Okay, WPATH so files. for the benefit of our listeners who may not have been listening a week ago, actually a week before last when mm -hmm. we talked about this, the leaked documents, what did it expose? So the leaked documents um, exposed a lot of um, sloppiness, a lot of careless talk, uh, a lot, uh, a lack of real concern over some serious issues related to the procedures. So WPATH is kind of like the organization that spearheads pushing policies that allow for transgender surgeries. Right. Many right. of them, as I read through the documents that were leaked, suggested they knew that what they were proposing was experimental, yes. had health implications. But that didn't seem to, to slow them down. No, it doesn't slow them down because I think politically what they're doing is creating a constituency so that they can develop this area of law called transgender rights. And so what better, more sympathetic group than children who have been affirmed in the wrong sex, right? They've they're been treated to be the gender they're not, the sex right. that they're not. Um, so you have adults uh, using children for their own political and sexual agendas is what this is. This leak, these leaked documents, pretty explosive in revealing that this yes. is an organization driven by ideologues. Many of the experts are actually transgender themselves, so they're not going to have second thoughts about whether it's a good thing or not. Right. Um, is this going to lead to some reform of policy? Well, that is really what we're all waiting to see, because the WPATH files are the basis for the recommendations from the American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, et cetera, et cetera. All the main uh, medical groups rely on WPATH for their uh, standards of care. And that means that school systems across the country rely on those organizations to inform their policies. Yeah. So until some of the major medical groups pull back from WPATH, um, things won't change very much. But we are hopeful that the that continuing media coverage of this will make that happen. All right, I want to shift gears very quickly to a topic that um, our listeners have probably never heard me talk about, and that's RuPaul and the <laughs> drag race. That's not cars. Uh, that's drag queens and mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, involved in some controversy with sexual exploitation and sexual, uh, actually, crime. Right. One of the stars of the show has been accused by multiple people of sexual misconduct. And um, the report is made in the Rolling Stone, which we have to admit doesn't have the greatest track record when they bring up issues of sexual misconduct. But um, in digging into this story, it, it just sort of pulled a few things, strings together for me on this topic. One of the pieces of legislation, the anti-trans, as the left likes to characterize it, legislation that they've been putting forward has been to try to eliminate drag, drag shows in public. And it's been RuPaul's Drag Show and this show on HBO, We're Here, those shows being on television in 
out there for the public to consume, normalize this right. to the degree that it's not seen as something controversial. And so it's very difficult for for people who don't want to have the sexual content out in the public square, out in the real world, not just on a screen, but being performed live for to have people be able to push back on that. But really, should we be surprised that sexual perversion leads to perverse activity? We should not. Yeah. I mean, th th this is, th they, they want to put a false facade, a facade on it right. to make it look all family friendly and yes. they want to go after the kids. But really, it is drawing them deeper into a perverse world that runs counter to the truth of God. Yes, indeed. Meg Kilgannon, thanks for, uh, for joining me. Thanks for having me.